guys, check out the next level games for all your TCG needs. Link is down below in the description of the video. Thanks, guys. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Team Fish Knuckles YouTube channel. So today, we're just doing a tournament recap. Uh, those who want a quick recap, I got second place at Memphis League Cup this past week. We're playing the Zark Persian. Uh, Slow King, a uh, bunch of one of supporter cards, really broke a deck, and if I was going to NIC, this is definitely the deck I'd be playing, and I would definitely make day two with it. I would bet my money on it. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> so I just wanted to play, I just want to play Zark one last time before, you know, the rotation happened. I mean, of course, we play Zark in, st in Expanded still, but in Standard, I don't want, I want to play Zark one last time. So that's what I did. We, we, we bought some Persians, some Slow Kings, and, uh, we went on out to Memphis League Cup and we played Zork Persian. A lot of people were, um, I guess, if they didn't watch the video, they they didn't know I was coming because I haven't been, I haven't played in a in a competitive environment in a long time. Uh, but still showing that I can still do fairly well at a tournament. Uh, so if you don't know, Zork's got the trade or whatever. Dedini is good for the Deddy change. It's really nice to like. I don't know, uh, if you don't have the, like, if you get, like, Marsh out of the four, you can Ultra Ball for Dedini and just go crazy if you don't want to go Lily or something. Or if you want to go Dedini to hit a Guzma and then trade and then go crazy, that's a really cool thing you can do. Slow King is broken, but, uh, it, it definitely was my downfall of the finals, so we'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, Muck was pretty much useless this weekend. I didn't really play to get any, any decks. I would not cut it, though. It definitely seems like it's, like, you just auto-win if they play Unknown or something like that, you with the Muck. Uh, and Zapdos is going to be pretty big at Nationals, I imagine. Uh, so it does help it against those Jirachi decks. I didn't play a single Jirachi deck, and we'll go over my, my matchups here in a little bit. Persian, oh my goodness, I can't say enough how good Persian is. Slashback is an amazing attack. Like, Slashback for 150, send in a non-GX Pokemon just to let it take a hit if it need to. Uh, Slashback with the... Uh, you could do Choice Band for 180 to hit those crucial numbers, which is pretty cool. Uh, then you can play stuff like Kakui to hit 200. Uh, so yeah, it's really good. Vengeance is broken, uh, because with Vengeance, you have 180, and once you get 9 in that discard pile, which is fairly easily, because you play 22 Pokemon. Uh, when you get the 9 in there, you get 180 plus the 10 is 190, uh, plus Choice Band is 220, plus Kakui is two. 40. Where's Kikui? Yeah, there he is. And so that you can one shot Pika Rum, stuff like that. Um, it's just nice to have a Pokemon that can hit over 200 damage pretty easily. Um, this can help you against a Basophion matchup, which is definitely my game plan. But against Basophion, you just use Persian. And like, if you take the first two prize cards with Zork, they go Beast String, you go Vengeance, knock them out, and they go like knock out your Persian. You have a second Persian to knock them out, or Slow King. Uh, Slow King with a Choice Band does one shot of a Basophion. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of different things going on here, but it's really nice. Ditto is always fantastic because you can just turn into whatever you want to at any moment. Uh, reset hole uh, against multiple decks. I just had Marshadow just sitting on the bench, just like ready to reset hole if they put down uh, any kind of stadium, um, especially that power plant to shut down my GX decks. And Tapu Lele, always good for that turn one, trying to find those lilies. Uh, the, the, the field lords are really good. Um, these are going to be helpful against the Weezing and... And that baby bus softly on, which is really cool. Uh, two of them is really nice. Uh, that's all I gotta say. It's really, really nice. Uh, four NAS, four Ultra, four communication. All right, good. One pal pad is very crucial in this deck because you're playing one Ace Roller, one Cynthia, one Judge, one Coco, one Latina Surge, one Kikui. So getting back those, you know, important resources are really nice. Most of the time, I was getting more Guzmas. I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, even though we played three, I was pal padding my Guzmas back in the deck for the most part. Uh, Stretcher is really cool. My, one of my favorite things to do, <clears throat> especially if we knew you're going to play multiple uh, power plants because they're playing Charizard or Basafleon. Uh The baby Basafleon, you can go like reset hole, and then you can like stretch a reset hole back onto your bench. And then they, they even put a stadium down. You can just bump it immediately, which is really cool. I like that play a lot, and I did it multiple times this weekend. Um, Ultra Ball, of course, for consistency, you're playing the 4 4 4. So 12 outs to find your Pokemon. Uh, you should be able to find them, right? You're looking at 8 outs for Ultra Ball and communication. I mean, with like uh, 2 Lele, two lele you should be able to hit something, right? 
An Ace Roll is good to pick up your damage Pokemon. Uh, this is going to help against those uh, non-GX decks that don't one-shot you, which is really cool. Uh, Cynthia is just a good draw supporter if you're in a bad situation. You can't Lily. Guzma is because you don't play Lycanroc anymore. Judge is really good against the Baby Bacephalon decks because they like to fill their hand up. It's good against any deck that likes to fill their hand up, and then you can judge them to four. And we'll go over that in a little bit, how that was helpful really during the tournament. Uh, Kogus Trap is great for that Confuse and Poison. Once again, in combination with Judge, if you go to Tennis Air, uh, Koga Judge, you put your opponent in a really bad situation, which is really cool. Also, the uh, the Poison extra damage could take knockouts. It definitely, I can't remember how exactly it took a knockout this weekend, um, but it helped me out against Basafion. I can't remember the exact math. Maybe I only had like eight Pokemon in the discard pile with Persian. Uh, so I did 160 plus the 10 is 170. And then um, maybe the Koga Trap did the 180. I know I played against Basafion in like round three or four, and that's what Koga Trap really important. Uh, Lily is important first turn. You want a Lily, final your level balls, your ultra balls, whatever. Latina Surge is to pull out these really amazing combos that we'll talk about later on. Kakui is to do that additional 20 damage, which is fantastic. If you're like, okay, I can't take a knockout, but Kakui can all of a sudden. Um, also, Koga is really good. Uh, I think I talked about this before. Uh, Danny kind of covered it. It's good with this chemical breath, a Lolling Grimer. You have this non GX EX to now can hit for 130. Um, because Chemical Breath does uh, 20 plus 50 for each damage, on, uh, each condition on your opponent. So when you confuse and poison them, you do 120 plus the poison, 130 plus choice. Man, it could be 160. I don't know the significance of that. I think Vidini has 160. Uh, so Vidini gets stuck in the axe spot. You can one shot it with a Chemical Breath. Uh, Lolo and Grimer, it's just really cool. Uh, Koga's Trap was originally for the Lolo and Grimer, but then it turned into something greater. And like I said, we'll go over that. Two Choice Band, uh, this is the only thing I really wish we played more of, but the deck is so, like, uh, tight on spaces. And then 3-4, I wish, once again, we played 4 Triple Acceleration Energy, because Persian became one of my best attackers during this whole tournament. Uh, View of Vengeance is fantastic. Slashback GX is great as well. Uh, Catwalk, I didn't even, like, talk about this, but Catwalk, just like, when you're, Zork gets knocked out, you're like, alright, I'm Catwalking. Like, when you Catwalk, you're basically saying, I'm taking a knockout this turn. Uh, so it's, it's a broken ability. Like, it's really good. Like, it's stupid good. Zork is in a really good spot right now, and everybody just, like, doesn't see it for some reason. I don't know why. Like, if I was going to Nationals, this would be the deck I would be playing. I would 100% be playing this deck. It, it, yeah. I mean, it's more response. It's more, it's not aggressive, right? Don't get me wrong. It's not your aggressive deck like the Charizards or Pika Roms, but it has answers to everything. As in this build right now, it has answers to everything, I feel like. Uh... There's a big debate over like Dugong versus Slow King. I'm 100% of the Slow King route. Being able to one shot stuff is great. Um, be able to one shot like the Charizard and stuff like that. And then you have the other Ditto for the other Charizard. It's fantastic. I love that a lot. Um, and it gets Basaf on if it does get played more. You have the Psychic with a Choice Man, which one shots it. One shots it and they knock it out. You can do the same thing. Or you go into Persian and Persian can just one shot Basaf on. So let's go over the matchups. Uh, so round, I'm going to try my best to remember everything that I can. Um, I haven't done a recap in a long time. But round one, we play against Zork Persian Savali. Um, he has a subpar start, and that's the best way to put. But, um, I mean, it's, it's Pokemon, right? We're in a League Cup, so most people don't have a bad start. But I target down his Valley early, so he can't, like, you know, Rebel GX. That's a very dangerous attack. Um, the Valley could have the fighting memory in their deck. I don't like the Valley Zork. It's too much going on. Like, I get it, right? You have the water memory and then all the other stuff that's in the fighting memory and, like, whatever blah 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 like it's cool right but i uh, i don't think it's that great of a deck uh don't get me wrong it might be good but it, it just seems like it's a pr like most of the stuff in my deck is like pretty useful all the time except for the soaking whereas the valley you don't even use it all the time so where he doesn't set up the valley he set up persian now his deck just has his like the valley line in his deck that seems useless i don't know but uh the main thing is he didn't really get set up uh, we knocked out his Savali pretty early, take prize cards, and then once you do that, you pretty much have the game, because what happens is late game Persians can just, like, start vengeance for knockout. I don't really much of this game. Um, it was very fast, because, like I said, he had a subpar start. Um, I don't know his accounts, uh, supporter cards, stuff like that, but we win that game pretty quickly uh, against Zorak Savali. So round two, we're playing against an Alolan Egg deck, and uh, let me pull that up real quick if those who don't know. Let's go Egg... Um, 
is this one, right? Tropical Shake. Uh, you can't add more than 120, but this is 160 HP Pokemon. So in my head, all right, so we got to use Persian, blah, blah, blah. And so we get to this one point in the game where it's really, really crucial. This is basically the turning point of the game. And if I did this, I won. And if he, it, and obviously I didn't do it, he would win. Um, I He had one Alolan Executor in the X spot, no Alolan Eggs. And unfortunately, I didn't get enough Pokemon in the discard pile early enough to take a knockout. Now, I did do a play, and I remember this uh, 100%. I would use a Slashback GX with Koga uh, for a knockout because, you know, poison it and it knocked it out. So, like I said, um, Persian was a MVP in this matchup because now, like I said, you have this attacker that can do more than 120 damage because usually against all the lanes you have a terrible matchup. But now with Persian, being able to Slashback with Kikuri and stuff like that, Vengeance is it's powerful as, as heck. Uh, but during that turn, I whiffed uh, two Pokemon in the discard pile. All right, I, I whiffed the Ultra Ball. I had a bunch of Pokemon in my hand, and I was discarding with Zork. I just couldn't find my Ultra Balls. And when that happened, the Tide kind of swung in his favor. Um, next turn, he was able to get two eggs out and uh, be able to keep training his alone eggs. I was doing great. Um, there was a turn where I even like judged him to four, and he hit like double stretcher Cynthia. Uh, so he just drew like amazing hot. Like I, I can't even complain. Like man was drawn uh, crazy. I didn't get my uh, this. This is one match probably where a little muck would have come into play, but it uh, it wasn't prized. My acer roll was prized. That's what it was. My acer roll was prized. And so I didn't really want to get the muck down until I had the ace roll at my price cards because you never know when you need to use the Tapu Lele or DD change. So I, I held onto the muck. But I never drew the Ace Roll. If I could draw into the Ace Roll, that could have helped. I think he did Guzma Zark, a damage Zark for a knockout. Because he's really not one-shotting stuff either. And the max he's doing is like 150, I think is what it is. Yeah, 150. And yeah, he does play, you know, um, multiple shrines. But with Mars Shadow, uh, Rescue Stretcher, and Double Field Blower, it's pretty much useless, right? His shrines get like one tick, if that. Uh, so that's a big thing as well. It was a really, really close match. I ended up having two price cards left. Like I said, if we, if that one turn we had no eggs on the bench, I took the knockout. Then he puts another egg down. I took a knockout. And then I, I win the game that way. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, so we lose against alone eggs. It's a, it's a, it's definitely somewhat in their favor. Like I said, Persian is definitely the way to go about this. So round three, we're playing against Baby Bus Sufflion. So we pull up the Sluffly on up real quick. Uh, so it's this guy. Not not that guy. <laughs> not that guy. Uh, not that guy, Josh. Come on now. Come on. Let's get it up. There we go. So Fireball Circus, right? Uh, so I knew I knew this would be a popular deck overall. It's just a good non-GX stacker. But the problem with the Sluffly on, especially in this matchup, it has 120 HP. So once we have a full bench, we can take knockouts. Another problem is we have Sloking. So we can take knockouts. What else is our problem? We have Judge. So we can Judge our hand to four. Uh, there's a lot of different things going on here that doesn't really go well with Blasphion. We also play two Field Blower. It's a higher count than most lists. So we're able to Field Blower his tools off every turn. Um, I, this matchup, I don't think, it went to time, but um, I was able to, he, he would end up using like Blasphion GX like take a prize card with Burst GX. So that was one, one cheeky way of taking a prize card, right? But I would, would never actually attack the Basafi on GX. I, w I think I like poked it once, and that way we can knock it out whenever. Like, because I, I know he doesn't play Acerola. But we would purposely target down his baby Basafi on. I would even let his Basafi on get like two energies on it and like do 100 damage or something cute like that. Because it wasn't going to take a knockout. Um, I think he did Welder one turn and swing for a significant amount of damage, but it didn't really matter. Um, because I would target his Basafiants, field blow them off, get that away, and get those Basafiants out of there. Um, and I, and he never could chain his his uh, Witch of Taunts, like I said, because we'll play two field blowers. I remember there was one really, really good turn. I would uh, Lieutenant Surge, Guzma, judge him. And and that was to like, knock out a Basafion with like multiple energies on it. And then he sent a Victini. And I think he made like a misplay where he accidentally uh, put too many fire energies back into his hand or deck. And when he did that, his Victini couldn't take a knockout. But even then, it was like so... I don't think it would have swung anything. And uh, it wasn't really looking good for our opponents. Uh, but being able to that Lieutenant Surge Guzma Judge playoff was really, really cool. Uh, to take a knockout on the bench with Selfie on that he just welded or two. Uh, so that definitely shut him down. And like I said, in, in, once you judge him to four, they're now a Selfie on deck. 
and they really don't play a lot of draw cards. Yeah, they play Welder, but it was late into the game, so his, like, Crystals and Flints are already used up, so that was pretty cool. So we win that one, so we're 2-1. Um, now, this is where my brain can't really exactly remember what happened. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, right? All right, so next down, we're playing against Basafion GX. Uh, a lot of Basafions here. Uh, so Basafion GX, you know, it used to be a terrible matchup for Zark. But now we have double Persian, uh, so that can answer it pretty well. You have the Slow King, which can do it pretty well. In that matchup, that's what I do. I get double Persian, which allows us to, like, Vengeance, Slashback, take knockouts. I don't think I get the Slow King down in this game, um, but I, I don't think he's set up very well. Um, I could be wrong, but he also plays his own Persian, and that's one thing I would target down. Because now since they have Persians, they're allowed to chain the Beast Rings um, pretty easily. So in this matchup, the way you go is you knock out like a Poipul, and then if you can knock out the Meowth, and then you go Beast Ring, and you go Persian, and then you go another Persian. Because they're really not going to knock you out until like turn whatever, right? And so they're always going to play catch up because it takes them a while to get going. Now, yes, they can like, they can use the GX tack one turn. And that's pretty much it, because by then you're taking two price cards, and then take one, and then you take one, and you're going this back and forth exchanging. Uh, I, 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 it's yesterday, I know I can't really remember, but I remember getting Don't Persian, and he even asked why do you get Don't Persian, because you Vengeance and Slashback as the way to go against this matchup. Like, it's broken, right? Once you get the Persian down, once once Zora takes two prize cards, it's Persian's time to shine, right? And even with the Slow King, you get Psychic, like I said, with the Choice Man to knock it out. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, so we win that matchup. I think, it, but I think the majority of the matchup he did, uh, he I think he prized like multiple Sufflions or something like that. Um, he definitely had a bad prizes, um, but I don't really remember a hundred percent. But then round five, we're playing against the undefeated. Unfortunately, we can't ID because uh, there's going to be like five X and ones. And whoever wins this match. Um, if I lost, there was only going to be four X and ones, and there was an X one that got paired down. So we had to play it out. So we're playing against another baby myself on deck. Um, but it was, it's, once again, it's pretty easy. Uh, turn one, I judged him. I know, I, I know that's scary to say, why. Right? We don't play Mars Shadow, or the right Mars Shadow. Uh, but I start with Mars Shadow, bench Azora, and I think maybe get another Zora down, and then. Lele for a judge and I'm like alright we're going in because I, I noticed that the Danny's in there we play a lot of outs to get the Danny like you know the four ultra ball four communication uh, we get drawn to the Zorks and stuff like that and, and, and pretty much what happens is I judge him to four he gets bad hands I retreat and like knock out his only bus off and on um, I think he had like one prize because I remember he using the um, the attack of bus off and and he just like he flipped over stuff on so I was like okay so I'm gonna lock this one out and you have like and he had one of the bench so he had one left in the deck his hand was already like low he was playing the greens engine um so there's really I mean he did I guess I don't know what that means really because I think they all play greens I don't know um but he's not playing Salazzle and my other Persephone player played Salazzle and that was definitely a little bit better because he'll be able to discard fires and draw cards so um but in this matchup and this is where, like, Reset Hole came in clutch because you can just, like, Reset Hole their Heat Factories and you get it back down and they get the, you know, the Silent Lap. Or they get that, not Silent Lap. If they get a Shrine or the Heat Factory down, then you can reset the hole again. Um, so it's really good. Um, I think I think you have a fine but stuff on matchup. Like, you got the Slow King as the attacker. You got Zork who can just one-shot him. Um, yeah, cards, like, Judge to disrupt them, and then you can power pad the Judge back on the deck, and then once they play so many cards, you can just judge them, and then they're kind of, like, sitting there, like, what do I do? The double field blower is great. Once again, every time you put down a Witcher Baton, I'm, I'm, I'm bumping it off. Like, it, they're going away. Like, they're not staying. He might be able to use two Witcher Batons if he's lucky, uh, but, yeah, it was just a bad match. Like, it was, it, I think it's a bad matchup. I, I'm, I'm, I'm confident it's a bad matchup now. Like, the more I played it. So, we uh, we go, what, 4-1? and one. We're still pretty good, right? We're 4-1. and one, We're doing good. Uh, we make top 4. We only have enough for a top 4, which made it even harder. Because if it was a top 8, of course, we would have ID'd and made a top cut. But we had to play. Uh, so, 4-1, and one, going to top 8. We're playing against the Bustathion player who played in the round 5, the undefeated guy. But once again, it's the same story, unfortunately. You judge him. He has bad hands. Game 2, judge and bad hands. So I two him. 
pretty quickly, unfortunately. A uh, great guy. Um, it seemed like he was. Uh, he said he's from California and knew. Um, I can't, man, now I can't remember his name, and now I feel like a jerk. Um, but he said he played other games like Vanguard and stuff like that. Um, and he was kind of getting a Pokemon. I don't know if he's played Pokemon before. Um, but I mean, he he knew what he's doing with stuff on deck. Don't get don't get me wrong. Like he knew what he was doing. He was doing the correct stuff. It was just like, okay, I'm gonna judge you, and uh, that that's pretty much it. Like, and that's what happens, right? You get judged in turn one. You get judged in turn one and hope he draws bad. Or what you could do is wait till he has like a ton of cards in their hand and judge him. And that's what I did game one. I knew for sure because he had like he had already like fiery flint, got a bunch of stuff. He was ready to take a knockout next turn because he was gonna like welder and like attach. But then I go, okay, judge, and then he has four cards, and he has to get, like, what, five to one-shot a Zork or something? I think he had, four, had to get four because he had used the uh, the attack, the ten damage. Also, in all the games we played, in game one, game two, and in round five, he would use uh, Basafion's first attack, and he would never hit a fire energy. So, yep. Yeah. Okay, so, that was uh, top four. It's a very unexciting top four. Uh, so we're in the finals, yay! All right, so I guess Brock, uh, who plays the, but who is a South on GX player, which I think, like I said, it used to be a terrible matchup. Maybe it's not so terrible now. I have to test it more. I didn't really test against South on that much. Of course, I was testing against like Rich Rich Charizard or Pikaram and stuff like that. But didn't play a single one all day. Don't get me wrong, there are multiple Rich Charizards there. I just didn't hit them. Um, I guess the Basafions were definitely handling them instead, right? The Basafions probably just, like, both Basafions probably have a good Dreshi Zard matchup. Uh, but, oh yeah, because Brock beat uh, Clayton in top four, and he's playing Dreshi Zard. I don't know how close it is, don't get me wrong, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't play Basafion or Dreshi Zard, so I have no idea how that matchup goes. Anyways, uh, so in game one, <laughs> um, unfortunately, I have to, like, I start with three Lilies in my hand, and there's really no way to, like, go for a Cynthia, so that was the big turning point of that deck. Um, outside of that, I had, I just didn't really get set up. Like um, <clears throat> the judge, like I think after game one, he was like, "Yo, you should have saw his hand. His hand was terrible. My hand was terrible. Like I didn't get nothing set up. Brock was just going in. I was like trying to like uh, hopefully find um, a Kogus trap, chemical breathum, and like confuse and hopefully he gets knocked out that way." But that never came into play. I was trying to, like, Guzma stall because he had burned a lot of energies um, in the early turn. So, like, maybe I can, like, Guzma stall at him and, like, make him deck out somehow while I try to figure out a game plan. And it worked. We had 75 minutes, so I was a lot to, like, kind of, like, um, goof around, trying to find different strategies because the, both these decks are fast. Uh, so, game two, I go first. Um... I went first game one, but it didn't matter. Because I remember during game one, I had a chance to, like, where I had a Lele, but all, but, like, all my supporters were gone. Because remember, we only played one Cynthia and four Lilies, and by, like, turn two, all my Lilies were gone. Uh, I think I couldn't find Palpad or something, and I didn't have any Zorks either. So it was just bad. I had a Lele, but no supporter guards and no Zorks in play, so it was bad game one. Uh, so game two... You know, we're doing good. We got our, you know, our multiple Persians, like, ready. They weren't on lock yet, but they were, like, ready to go. Zark was trading. We had to take multiple knockouts. And, uh, like, the game was, like, definitely mine to win. Like, 100%. Um, so he's, like, you know, I take my two prize cards. He's in beast ring mode. He gets, like, a billion energies out on the field. I think I, like, I knock out, like, a Poipo and then a Meowth. And then, oh no, a Ditto and a, and a, a Ditto and Meowth. And then he don't even have any purples, poipoles, or Naganatos, but he's like, whatever, I'm gonna hit Triple Beast Ring or something and got all of his energies out. Takes a knock out of Zark. I send up a uh, Slowpoke, Volva to Slowking, Persian, Catwalk for some cars I need. Um, choice, I go a uh, Triple Acceleration because my game plan was if he had, he had all those energies in the field, and if he had put, you know, Discarded the energy off the active and left two on the bench. I was going to Guzma use Slowking to knock out the bench, but he separated them one to one. Uh, so at this point, you have to either Kakui, Choice Ban, um, him. But uh, I have the Kakui in hand, and of course, Josh makes the misplay of the century. I go Psychic, uh, declare a knockout. I, I guess everybody at the table pretty much notices. And then Clayton's looking to the side. Clayton kind of looks and is, like, counting stuff and figuring out. 
I look at my hand, and the Kikui is still in my hand. I said, I scoop, and uh, that's the game. Uh, and we also did the math, too, because if I were to Kikui trade, I would have found the Triple Acceleration Choice Band to one-shot his myself on my Persian, and we went up to game three. But uh, Silly Josh just, I guess, overlooked the Kikui in my hand and uh, didn't play it. Uh, so, yeah, that was unfortunate, but it's whatever. We still got second place. Um, I guess it's just been... I guess I'm just used to PTCGO so much that I, I know it's going to sound like a weird excuse. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I just had to slip up, right? Um, and even then, like, attacking with the Slow King was, like, pretty sketchy. I should have probably just, like, attacked with a Persian and just, like, I should have just slashed back and sent up a Zork to get knocked out. Like, that's definitely the right play that I should have did because he had three prize cards left. And if I were to slash back to the Persian, I'd force him to Guzma because then if he knocks out the Zark, we can then go, you know, slow king knockout or something like that. But, silly Josh, tricks are for kids and uh, did that huge misplay. Yeah, the, the correct play was definitely not even attack with the slow king. The slow king is like, you know, we had three prize cards left. So, like, attacking with Persian, slash back, send a Zork, and I hope he takes, you know, the knockout of the Zork. And then he goes slash back again. And then if he doesn't, if he goes with the Persian, I had taken another Persian off my prize cards. So I would have evolved the ditto on my bench to a Persian, and then I would have had a Persian ready to go. Um, but that did not happen. Uh, so yeah, that was unfortunate. I mean, we would have went to game three, and then he would have went first, and who, who knows what would have happened. But unfortunately... We don't win the cup. We get second place, though. I mean, I, I still did, like, phenomenal. I did some cool plays with, like, the Lieutenant Surge. I pulled the Lieutenant Surge Guzma Judge playoff, so I'm happy uh, with this deck. But, like I said, I think this deck can take down anything. I think it's the best deck going to NIC. People are arguing, fight with me. I don't care. Uh, there's a reason why they're rotating Zorak out, because it's the best deck, and they don't want to see win worlds. Uh, but if you need help with, with strategies against... Uh, and I'll give some real quick. Against Reshizard, when they go Snorlax and they start punching you in the face with, um, with whatever, the the evolution card, the game plan against that is to go, like, DCE or Lele, go, Co go Latina Surge, Koga, Judge him. And I, I've done this multiple times, and I even send a picture to a bunch of my friends. They, they love to go, like, the 210 draw a bunch of cards with the Snorlax. I don't know why they do it, um... But then, when they, if, they, if they play the GX tech, then it's beautiful. But even then, if they don't, the game plan is you DC your Lele, you go Lieutenant Surge, Koga's Judge, and now they're confused, poisoned, you judge them, and you just hit them a billion damage, and you put about four cards. And it doesn't matter what build of Charizard they're playing, if they're playing Greens, or if they're playing, like, uh, the Welder. I mean, I don't know the different versions. I don't care. They're all the same. They're all Reshi's Rs. I hate people go, I'm playing the Greens build. I'm not playing the Greens build. I don't know what they mean to me. I don't care. It don't matter because when well, the greens version probably seems like a little bit more scary because they get greens for like a switch or something. But then they had to have another Pokemon on the bench. I don't know. Uh, they had to like double switch or something like that, and that's that's not going to happen. But even if they do, then they're taking like on a Lele and then you Zork them. Um, so I, I think that's a fine matchup. And then like if they play double Snorlax, that's when it starts getting kind of shaky. But um, usually, a lot of people don't play the double Snorlax, it was like only DDG, so maybe they'll start playing double Snorlax. If they, have, if they play double Snorlax, then it's a little bit more difficult for sure, but if they don't, you just like knock out the one Snorlax, and then go Charizard, you go Slow King and win the game. So, uh, seems pretty easy. Against Picarom, the only card you really have to worry about is Picarom itself. Zapdos, you just one-shot, um, a Zera, or you can just one-shot with like Persian, Top of Coco GX, you don't have enough energies in the field for them to do anything. Uh, and the Picarom, like I said, you do the whole, like, Vengeance play. You can also, like, two-shot the Persian. If you, I mean, not two-shot the Persian. Two-shot the, the Picarom because they're they're not going to be able to one-shot your, your Zark pretty quickly unless they hit, like, multiple um, of, the light, of the lightning boost thing. Um, so you can take one knockout with Picarom with Zark, and they go to the second one, then you go Persian, and you knock them out and win the game that way. Um... Against Weezy, you play the, the double field blower. You have the muck to shut down the mission mime. Oh, also, I didn't uh, talk about this, but against the Alolan egg deck, he played the Mr. Mime to make you not pick up your damage Pokemon, which is why I was holding on to the muck. I didn't go into that really, but if if I could find the Ace Roll, I would have dropped the muck and Ace Rolled. Um, 
in I think I've covered pretty much all the other matchups. Against Amir, you, you just draw hotter. Um, you just hope they play Savali, and their hand gets clunked with those, like, memories and whatever. And then you play Double Field Blower to help you, def like, like, if they drop the memory too early, you just blower them. Um, so, yeah. I think the deck's good. It has counters to everything. I think it's better than Dugong. Um, the only thing I would, like, maybe you could play like, a one of Dugong, and if you're really scared of Basafion, what you can do is you, like, smack a Basafion with Zork, and then you go Dugon Choice Band. I think Dugon to 60. Um, if it does, then this play is pretty cool because you can, like, um, hit the... Yeah, 60 damage. On, don't, it, it don't apply weakness for the bench Pokemon. So you hit the active with the Choice Band for 180 and hit that bench one for a, a 60 to also do 180. So that's one cool thing you do. You can play like a 1 of Dugong and turn your Ditto to Dugong and take a knockout that way if you want to. Um, that's the only thing I would really say about Dugong because if not, you're going to lose against Reshizard. Um, I think you are. I think that's a terrible matchup without Sloking. Um, that's all I got to say about that. But guys, tell me this video. Like I said, I'm not going to NIC on this weekend. But if I was, I would play this as Act 60 and make Day 2 and win, more, and win Nationals. I'm that confident. But guys, tell me this video. Thanks for watching it. Thanks for watching it. Sorry I misplayed in the finals. But still, second place. Haven't played a tournament in like forever. Um, so, you, you, your boys still kind of got it. Alright, hit the subscribe button. See you tomorrow for another... Uh, NIC deck building thing. Uh, yeah. Bye.